Good morning and welcome back to Tactics Board. The playoff push continues this weekend when Norwich City face Sunderland at Carrow Road. And again, it feels like things are in their favour. Sunderland are in a little bit of turmoil with their managerial situation. Their key player, Jack Clark, is out for six weeks and they've been in poor form. But that's been the case in a few games in recent weeks. But they drew with QPR, they drew with Blackburn Rovers, and they seem to be achieving in these more difficult games. But Sunderland are closer to that bracket and are loosely in the playoff mix. So Norwich will be wary of the test in front of them, even if they do go into it as favourites. I'm going to provide you with a tactical preview and predicted starting eleven for the game. So without further ado, here's the eleven I think David Wagner will trust to do the job for him. So I've gone for Angus Gunn in goal, Jack Stacey at right back, Grant Hanley and Ben Gibson in the centre of defence with Demetrius Yunulis at left back, Gabriel Sarah and Kenny McLean at the heart of midfield with Christian Fasnacht on the right, Borja Scythe on the left and Ashley Barnes behind Josh Sargent up front. I said in that intro, as I often do, that this is the 11 I think David Wagner will trust in the game. But it's also the 11 that he's he's sort of got forced upon him by, by injuries in certain positions. At the back, there's absolutely no doubt that Angus Gunn deserves his place after another impressive display at Blackburn last weekend. He had to dig the team out on several occasions um, in the first half and without his intervention it probably would have been an incredibly disappointing um, zero points compared to the fairly frustrating and disappointing one point that Norwich left he would part with so they've got a lot to thank him for not only last week but over the course of the season and against a team in Sunderland that likes to press or, or at least under Mick Beale and, uh, and under Tony Mowbray like to press his distribution will be key as well so yeah, another game where Angus Gunn will be an absolutely vital player and absolutely no doubt over his place. Of course, injury barring in goal um, this weekend. At right back, Jack Stacey, who I saw was, was nominated for the club's Player of the Month award. And I think rightly, he's still sort of going under the radar a little bit, but his marauding runs forward and his purpose have been a real key feature of Norwich's turnaround in form. And I think he's improving defensively as well. He should have a slightly easier defensive task than Kellen Fisher had at the Stadium of Light purely because obviously of that, that Jack Clark injury. And although um, he did sort of make his mark in the second half as well, when Sunderland beat Norwich 3-1 in the reverse fixture, it should be a slightly easier afternoon for Jack Stacey. Sunderland, of course, do have options in forward areas and it won't be especially easy, but um, especially when you, you consider his recent upturn in form, you'd expect Jack Stacey to be a key player once again, in the heart of defence, it's Ben Gibson and Grant Hanley, and that's one of these areas that's impacted by injury. Not really much choice for, for David Wagner when you consider um, that the team selection that he's gone for previously. Of course, Shane Duffy is now going to be out until the international break. That's what Wagner revealed at his pre-Sunderland um, press conference. So Hanley in that right centre-back position looks like he's pretty nailed on and unless Wagner suddenly starts trusting Danny Barr over his captain. So you'd say Grant Hanley is very likely to be in the centre of defence and I think he really struggled against Blackburn. He struggled quite a lot um, against against QPR a couple of weeks ago before as well but he's been fairly decent at home in those Watford and Cardiff games he's he did well and, and has thrived so you'd expect and hope that he would be back to his best at home against Sunderland where Norwich will maybe be a little bit more proactive and he, he has to be on the back foot a little bit less for Ben Gibson he's been in fine form actually for most of the season when he's been called upon and I think that's something that people are now are now really realising he's got a little bit of support behind him um, from the home crowd which to be honest he hasn't had for most of his Norwich career since that that title winning season when obviously crowds weren't really in the stadiums so he has faced a lot of criticism from this fan base but they seem to be um, in his favour at the moment his form is going well and although these might be his last few months in Norwich he might be on a, a little bit of a, a farewell tour it does seem to be going fairly well for him at these last few months at left back you knew this and we've had this discussion over and over again on tactics board about the fact that I think McCallum is deserving of the left back spot. I think he's been better than you knew this. You look at those two frustrating draws and both equalizers actually he was he was culpable um for them in the sort of 
build up stages, if not um, immediately. He sort of relaxed a little bit too much when the ball was heading over to the back post and that ended up in the corner that, that Blackburn scored from at Ewood Park and those defensive lap defensive lapses can't keep happening if Norwich are going to keep on picking up points in this playoff race and I think offensively McCallum's been the better player as well to be honest but uh, we know Wagner likes you knew this we know that he's chosen him over McCallum in in pretty much 90% of cases where they've both been available so I'd expect to see the Greek at left back this weekend in the centre of midfield again not much choice Marcelino Nunez will miss this game it's expected that he'll be back uh, for Rotherham but not available this weekend and then you look at the rest of the midfield options and it's unlikely it feels that David Wagner sort of drops in Liam Gibbs especially now that he sees him as a sort of wide option with those injuries to the wingers as well um, so you expect to see Sarah and McLean once again of course Sarah in that advanced number 10 role at Blackburn that tends to be what Wagner's done away from home but at home it's been Sarah and McLean in the centre of midfield so in a sense Nunez's injury has sort of taken a, a tough decision away from Wagner I'm sure he would have preferred to make that decision himself but he will obviously drop out with that hip injury and you'd expect to see Gabriel Sarah and Kenny McLean both players that have been have had fairly sturdy seasons for Norwich. I mean, that's that's probably a, a harsh way to describe it. Kenny McLean has been, I think, a lot of people think their best player this season. He's certainly in the top three for most people so far this season. And Gabriel Sara is up towards it. He had, obviously, that quiet few months, but he seems to be getting back somewhere towards his best. Of course, he's been contributing sorts of, sort of goals and assists, and you'd like to see a little bit more consistency in his play, but he set up Josh Sargent with a lovely, lovely pass at Blackburn, and he's producing the moments that we all know he's capable of. So hopefully that consistency improves towards the back end of the season, and he can really help Norwich City's playoff push. And with the likes of Jonathan Rowe, Ono Hernandez now out injured, they need somebody to step up in those attacking areas and create those chances. So um, it looks most likely that it will be Sarah, and he's been hinting at getting back towards those sorts of levels um, in the last few weeks. So I expect to see those two in midfield. On the right, Christian Fastnacht. Again, that's not really a choice that, that Wagner has to make. Um, he announced that Hernandez had broken his foot at his press conference yesterday and uh, some really interesting quotes from Hernandez actually on, on his YouTube channel. So I'd recommend going over to pinkin.com to have a read of those. But he's clearly devastated and Norwich will be devastated because they don't really have the options in that sense. And Christian Fastact is a very unconventional right winger. So they don't have that player really unless Wagner's going to suddenly trust academy players to, to be on the bench and to make impacts for him. They don't have that player to make the impact, to drive at the defence, to scare the, the full-backs a little bit. So, although Fastnacht has improved his his goal-scoring and, and assist output in the last couple of months, and that's really encouraging, and it's hard to criticise Fastnacht for how he's played recently, I do worry what they'll do without that sort of option, because quite often that combination in wide areas, that scaring of the fullback to allow Jack Stacey some space outside as well, has allowed them to flourish. So I think not only in that position but in how it affects other positions and how it affects Norwich's general play um Hernandez injury combined with Rowe and the fact that they just don't have that option on the right hand side now I think could be a serious issue but for now Fastnacht has been playing well not really much of a decision to make for Wagner so that's an easy one with Fastnacht on the right it's the same case with Borja Scythe on the left and especially with Ono Hernandez injury he's now safe in his position but he hasn't been playing or working like like someone who is. He works incredibly hard, contributes really well defensively, as Wagner reiterated again at his pre-match press conference. So Norwich can trust him. I think you'd like to see him step up offensively in terms of what he's tangibly producing with goals and assists. He hasn't been doing that too much in recent weeks, but uh, he clearly has the capability of doing it. He scored that fantastic winner against Coventry. He scored other fine goals this season, so he's got the talent to do it. It's just about whether he can step up in these next few weeks. Up front is another area where the Nunez injury impacts things. Of course, his place in midfield pushed Sarah forward and that pushed Barnes out of the team, but I think he's been really good in the last few months. He combines very well with Josh Sargent and I think to be honest, although at times this season you might not have trusted him to step in when he was really needed, I think he's actually proven um, since the Americans been back in the team that he can 
he can provide a, a real significant function, especially at home when Norwich try to dominate things a little bit more and try to be more proactive. The movement between him and Sargent, there's just that understanding there. And um, those two together really provide options for for the attacking two. Uh, Barnes sort of pulls the defence out and that allows Sargent to go in behind as well. And, and you can see those searching passes from McLean and Sarah very often um, in those areas. So... Yeah, I think Barnes has done a commendable job since Sargent has been back in the team and I don't think Norwich fans should have any worries to see him back in the team as is very, very likely this weekend. Of course, up front, Josh Sargent and uh, you wouldn't question that decision from Wagner, would you? Ten goals already this season despite missing four months through injury. He wasn't really on it at all at Blackburn but based on his form since he's returned from injury, he's had a full week leading up to this one and, and you'd suggest that he'll be keen to put the record straight after that frustrating draw against Blackburn. So I've gone for those two up front. As far as the test that Sunderland will provide, we know that they like possession, especially under Tony Mowbray they did and Michael Beale tried to, to emulate a similar style of football um, even if he wasn't very successful at all in his eight weeks as the manager. So they've got a, an interim manager in until at the end of the season and it's it will be interesting to see whether they sort of try and replicate the same style of football um, from now until then. You'd suggest that's probably the, the smart move, given there's not much time now and they want to push for the playoffs. It feels like it's a bit more of a must win for them than for Norwich, probably a bigger game for them than for Norwich, because if they lose this, it really feels like they may be out of the playoff race. So it'll be interesting to see how they sort of tackle Norwich's setup um, in their their pre-match presser there was the admission that Norwich like possession so it'll be interesting to see whether they try and disrupt that or whether they accept that and sit off and try and deny them the opportunity to uh, to create chances you, chances you'd suggest based on how they've played over the course of this season um, that they may actually just try and press and try and deny Norwich that opportunity but at Carrow Road in front of their home fans with the confidence that they've got with their home record, that may well be just what Norwich wants. So hopefully they can pull off what would be another huge result at Carrow Road. Of course, we'll have every kit covered for you across our channel. So go to pinkin.com um, for more. Go to pinkin.com forward slash subscribe to learn more about our ex subscriber exclusive columnists, uh, analysts, you know, you know the drill. So uh, go over there, check out our WhatsApp channel. Of course, keep it peeled to this YouTube channel as well. Um, me and Adam will be going live with the preview show at lunchtime. So plenty of content for you to feast on. Hopefully you'll have the appetite for it after an impressive result for Norwich at Carrow Road. Thank you for joining me at Tactics Board. I'll see you again very soon.